You and I share 75% of the same genes with a rat. We share 98.4% of the same genes with a chimpanzee. And how many of you know somebody out there, it's really hard to detect that 1.6% difference? <laughs> how many of them are sitting right next to you right now? <laughs> now, understanding that you and I are animals, I've decided to combine what my wife knows about human behavior with what I know about animal behavior, and I've come up with what I call cowboy psychology. Bubba was out training his bird dog. He said he had the shock collar strapped on him. And he said he hit the button and the dog didn't respond. He said he hit the button and the dog didn't respond. Now Bubba may have not been the sharpest knife in the drawer, but he knew he had one of two problems. Is one, either the shock collar was broken, or two, the dog had become desensitized to the shock, which they sometimes will. So Bubba scratched his head and he says, man, he says, I have to figure out some way to test this thing. <laughs> now some of you are way ahead of me here. <laughs> Bubba did the only logical thing he could think of. He went to his wife for advice. <laughs> now, who do these men look like in beer commercials? Don't look like any of the men that attend the BST Users Conference. <laughs> Go to Florida, and who do they put in their commercials down there? Those people that can't punch their ballot all the way through. <laughs> If you wear Air Jordans, then you can run faster. You can jump higher. You can be just like, like Mike. I said that in a speech in Montana. I said, you can be just like, and a guy in the back of the room said, OJ. <laughs> I said, you bought the wrong shoes, man. <laughs> You're going to be the south end of a northbound steer. OK, I've you, heard that before. You have? OK. Now, so what I want you to do is I want you to stand, come over here, and I want you to face that way, and I want you to keep walking, and I'm going to rope you, and I'm not going to hurt you, okay? Uh, I've what? heard that before, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is even better than I anticipated. <laughs> keep going. No. no. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I now, you, you have a problem with instructions, uh, don't you? <laughs> That's... <laughs> Okay. I told you to, to keep on going. You didn't. Where's that shock collar when you really need it? <laughs> what separates us from other animals? I love the answers I get from audiences. One woman says, animals can't accessorize. <laughs> You've just seen the Jeff Foxworthy side of my split personality. I use humor to demonstrate my fundamental tenet of cowboy psychology. Without a purpose, our only motivation is reward and punishment. I can train any animal using reward and punishment. And since humans are animals, we've been conditioned to respond to these extrinsic stimuli. However, studies show that our productivity goes up as much as 40% when we are intrinsically motivated. You're about to see how we can rise above our animal natures and be intrinsically motivated by the one motive that is unique to the human species, purpose. In addition to this brief overview, you can check out several segments from my presentations, including why the chicken really crossed the road, Bubba tests his shock collar, the care and feeding of Shamu, what separates us from other animals, the transformational power of purpose, control the head and you control the animal, the tip of the iceberg, and now for the Dr. Phil side of my split personality. What other things might separate us from other animals? There is one really important difference. We are the only animals that can choose our behavior. All other animals are merely responding or reacting to reward and punishment every day. That means all other animals are merely reactive, but we have the ability as human beings to be proactive. Here's the principle that I want to share with you. It's a fundamental principle of livestock handling. And that is, if you control the head, you control the animal. Okay. You see, I can take John anywhere that I want him to go. I can't motivate you. I can only manipulate you. And how many of you in here absolutely detest being manipulated? Yeah. 
But how many of you will also admit that you're guilty of manipulating others? If you hate being manipulated, why do you do it? Why? Because it works. Why does it work? Because everybody in this room has been conditioned to respond to reward and punishment. Without a purpose, our only motivation is reward and punishment. Let me repeat that. Without a purpose, our only motivation is reward and punishment. There's an interesting thing whenever you use reward and punishment as a motivator. You always have to increase the degree of stimulation. I'm here today to help you reach your full potential. Now here's what's neat about it. For 35 years, six months, and 16 days of my life, and that correlates to March 21st, 1988, I had been motivated primarily by reward and punishment. Whenever I started focusing on my purpose, though, amazing things took place in my life. Now, I don't share that with you to say, look at what I've done, because I believe I'm just an ordinary person. But here's what I've discovered. Ordinary people can accomplish the extraordinary when they know what their purpose is and they act on that purpose. This completely transformed my life. Why are you crossing the road? Why do you want to get to the other side? What's your motive? Is it reward? Is it punishment? Well, if it is, then we're no different than any other animal. The most important question that I'm going to leave you with is this. What is your purpose? Thank you very much.